Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Alex Perry, and I'm a content creator and video marketer from Toronto, Canada. And today, I'm gonna show you exactly how I shot and edited this iced tea ad that I created right here. Let's get to it. Now, this video was not in partnership with Peace Tea. It's not a sponsored video. This is just something that I thought would be a lot of fun to create because I really love the branding of the Peace Tea iced tea cans. And I just really like the style of their, you know, the logo, their branding, the hand-drawn cartoon type look to it all. So I thought it would just be a lot of fun to create a little mock ad for this product. Now, the style of this video is a little bit different than what I'm used to doing. I normally go with a whole black and white monochrome type look to everything. Like, look at my clothes, look at the office back here. That's just kind of my style. But for this, I thought it would be a lot more fun if I went with a very colorful neon light type look to the whole thing. It would have been much easier if I just went with the whole black look. Um, you know, just filming this thing with a back black drop with some lights on it would have been a lot easier. But every once in a while, it's good to just challenge yourself and step outside of your comfort zone. So I thought, screw it, let's just shoot this whole thing on a green screen, which I really don't have a ton of experience with, and make it this really cool, fun, awesome, colorful video. So I didn't have a traditional green screen backdrop paper or backdrop roll when I started making this video. So I just grabbed a couple of green poster boards that I had on hand and clipped them to a stand. This was going to be the main green screen backdrop for everything I was going to show here today. I also traced and cut out the exact circle shape of my Lazy Susan that I have so that I can put that green piece of paper on the Lazy Susan as well. This way, both the backdrop and the stand that everything was on was going to be green to make it easier to key out and post. Since everything I was shooting was relatively small, this was more than enough space to shoot exactly what I needed to. This also made things much easier for me because I didn't really need a big area to set everything up. I just had to set everything up on a little bit of a stand on my desk here and it was perfect. It was good to go. I didn't need a really big area with a big backdrop stand and all that to be able to film things. So this was a simple straightforward setup. I set the small green screen board up right behind my desk because I already had my lighting set up there for when I shoot my main YouTube talking head videos. I just moved the lights around a little bit to get them exactly where I needed to. So first things first, I set up my main key light. It was the Aperture 120D with the light dome attachment on it, which was just to soften the light a little bit. I also attached my honeycomb grid to it so I can help really narrow down and focus the light. I placed it slightly in front of the can, but directly to the side, aiming slightly back so that the light not only hit the can, but also the background green screen. Now, it's super important that you light your green screen properly. I didn't exactly do this, and it actually caused quite a few problems for me when I was editing, but I'll get more into that later on once we get to the editing portion. Next, I wanted to add a little bit of rim light to the opposite side of the can. As you can see, it's a bit dark here, and I just feel it will pop a little bit more and look more appealing if it had a bit of an edge light to it. So I placed my Aperture LS Lightstorm panel light to the back right side, basically at a 45 degree angle, and used the barn doors to just angle the light until I was happy. Finally, I propped up a white foam board near the front right of the can to just add a little bit of fill light on the front right side of the can. It was looking a little bit dark in my eye, so I felt it just needed a little bit of a boost. After setting this all up, I was happy with the lighting and was ready to get shooting. So this is where it's time to get creative. Now, I didn't exactly have a plan for how specifically I wanted this video to play out, so I just made a shot list of all the different types of shots that I wanted to get to potentially use for this video. This included some frontal shots of the can that was rotating, both the top, middle, and bottom of it. It included shots of the cans rotating kind of like, you know, as if they're floating in free space, shots of the whole fruits as they're rotating, shots of slices of the fruit as they're rotating as well, and just a couple of the objects also moving once again as if they're floating in space. So I basically just used this list as a guide to help me get enough shots to hopefully put this video together in a proper cool way. Now, filming the shots did take a little bit of trial and error, but that was just because of the nature of using a manual Lazy Susan. The easiest shots were definitely just the cans straight up on the Lazy Susan as they're slowly rotating. I just simply set up the can in the middle of the Lazy Susan, made sure all the lighting and everything was set up properly, put my camera on a tripod, and just started filming as I rotated the Lazy Susan very slowly. The more challenging shots were definitely the fruit shots. I did play around with having the fruit just sitting on the Lazy Susan and having it rotate very slowly as well, but there was a lot of shadow actually from the fruit that was being cast on the green screen. And I figured this might be a problem in post, and I was actually right. When I did go in post after the fact and use some of those shots, it was quite challenging to properly key out all those shots that had the shadow on the bottom. So knowing that this was probably gonna be a problem, I actually decided to stick the pieces of fruit or the whole fruits on a skewer stick and then just, you know, rotate them slowly by hand. I just honestly started to wing it and just get creative with all the different movements and motions that I did. But I didn't really want anything crazy because I figured I can add some extra motion in post if I wanted to. So just having some slow rotations and slow movements was all I needed to get. Now, one of the things I wish I did do 
was put green painters tape on the skewer sticks. This would have made things so much easier when editing them out in post, but since I didn't really have any painters tape on hand, I just left them as is, so I had to manually mask out each stick after already removing the green screen in post. It just really adds a bit of extra unnecessary work to your workflow, so just make sure if you're doing something similar, tape up those sticks. Trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss that stuff. As well as having the cut up fruit slices on the skewer sticks as well, I also decided to start dropping the fruit and see if I could capture that in motion. I did shoot everything at 120 frames per second so that I could slow it down, but you know, I really wasn't sure if those shots were going to turn out well, and to be honest, they didn't. But the one shot that I did end up using was when I put a bunch of raspberries on a clear sheet of paper I had, and I just kind of threw them and bounced them up so the fruit kind of popped up and slowly fell back down. Once again, wasn't really sure what it was going to turn out, but I actually surprisingly liked how it looked and it made it in the final cut of the video. So, since I wasn't super experienced with green screen, I really didn't know what actually was usable and what wasn't, so it was time to head over to the computer, dump all my footage, and start checking things out. Now, people always ask me if I start off with the edit and then find my music to match it, or if I find my music and then start cutting to it right away. And honestly, it really depends on the project. I don't really have one set way of doing things, so it really, really depends on how I'm feeling with the project. And sometimes finding the music clip, like in this instance, before starting the project, is what actually really helps things move along. Videos and ads like this are really effective when they are short and sweet, so I definitely have to cut down the music track. So I just found some awesome parts in the song that were pretty dynamic, and found a good spot that would be the perfect, you know, ending to this video for the hero shot of the final three cans in their entirety, and just arrange it to make sense for about a 15 second clip. Then, before starting to actually edit and cut everything together, I knew I had to find my awesome background for this video. So I hopped on over to motionray.com and I started looking for video backgrounds there. Now, Motionray is a paid service and this video is not sponsored by them. I've just been a customer of theirs for a very long time, so I immediately knew that's exactly where I was gonna go to find this awesome background. But you could probably find some free video backgrounds on YouTube or on Google that are fall under the you know Creative Commons license, if that's the right license, maybe, I don't know, is it? But you know what I mean, it's just gotta be like a royalty free video clip. That's when I stumbled upon these awesome neon light looking backgrounds and I knew that was exactly what I wanted to use. Then I started looking through my clips and making note of which ones were good and I started editing it together. It's always good to start with some establishing shots so I use some of the close up shots of each can. Now, no matter how short or simple it is, I feel it's always best to tell some type of story. So in this instance, I really didn't want it to just be a random collection and random ordering of shots of, you know, iced tea cans, of fruit, of, you know, the drinking poured it had to tell some kind of story. So the natural course of action for something like this is obviously getting a drink, opening it up, pouring it, and having it ready to go, right? So it's a very, very simple narrative, simple story, but it at least helps guide the video in a certain path. So after the establishing close-ups, I figured next you grab a glass and put some ice in it, which is where the falling ice cube shots hitting the glass comes in. Then a nice close-up of the can opening, which is easily achieved by using some fishing line. Thank you, Daniel Schiffer, for that tip. And finally, the pouring of the iced tea. Now, after the pouring shots, I know there's not really much else you can do, so I wanted to give enough focus on the pouring of the iced tea. So that's where these three shots come in. And then to make things a little more fun and interesting, I thought having a couple of shots of some of the fruit before showing the final hero shot of all three cans would be great. It's just a good way to show you'll have a burst of flavor and what to kind of expect when drinking this iced tea. And last but not least, there's the hero shot. That's all three cans, slices or pieces of each fruit floating around them, water burst behind everything. It's the money shot of the video. This was the most complex shot of the entire video and it took the longest to edit this individual sequence. All right, now finally, I'll quickly go over the edit for this video. I edited it all together using a combination of Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. All of the keying was done in Premiere Pro and a few things like adding some motion blur to moving shots were done in After Effects. So first, you start off with the keying using the Ultra Key Effect. Before you apply it to your clip, make a simple mask around the object you want to remain in. If there's any motion or movement to the object, you want to track your mask to always keep the object within the mask. I manually added keyframes for the tracking since the automatic method never quite got it right for me. Using a mask makes keying a lot easier because you have way less of the green screen in the shot, which ultimately makes it easier to dial in the correct settings for the key and won't leave you with any weird artifacts anywhere in your frame. The last step before applying the ultra key is to right click your clip and nest it. Now you can apply the ultra key effect to your clip. Then you click on the little eyedropper for key color and click on the green screen close to your object. Then you just play around with the settings under matte generation, matte cleanup, and spill suppression until things look good and natural. 
To go back to what I mentioned earlier, having your green screen lit evenly and well is important for this stage right here. It took me a lot longer to dial in these settings to make it look right because the green screen wasn't even. Some spots were lighter and some spots were darker, which doesn't give you a clean key. So make sure you focus on adding a separate light to evenly light your green screen so that you don't waste time later in post. Now, you've got your main keyed out clip to do whatever you need with. You can add some rotating animation, some movement, some zoom ins, or whatever else you want to make the shots look more dynamic. And to quickly show you the most complex shot, it's just a combination of different clips using these techniques all layered on top of each other. So I started with the main cans as a starting point, then I added each individual fruit piece, and finally I realized it needed something more, so I added the water burst behind everything with the stock footage I found on Motion Array. Those clips weren't keyed out, but I changed the blending mode to luminosity add so they looked like they were a part of the scene. And there you have it. That is how to create a fun, awesome iced tea ad right from home using green screen keying techniques. I know it's not the easiest way or the most simple way to do things, but I still think it's great to challenge yourself and do things the hard way sometimes. It would have been quite a bit easier to just film everything on a black background, but honestly, I just feel like it wouldn't have had that awesome pop to the video if it didn't have a colorful neon light background. So I'm actually quite glad I didn't take the easy way and just film it on a black backdrop. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it inspires you to go out and create something awesome. If you have shot something similar to this, or if you will be filming something similar to this after watching this video, please share it with me over on Twitter at Alex S. Perry or on Instagram at the same handle. I always love seeing what you guys work on, so please share it with me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button down below and drop me a comment letting me know what you thought. Also while you're at it, don't forget to hit me right there in the face or hit the subscribe button down below to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit that notification icon down below to get notified every single time I drop new videos like this one. You can also check out my last video by clicking this box right over here. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. Once again, I'm Alex Perry. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.